All right, so we know that tyrosine hydroxylase, the enzyme that's involved in catecholamine synthesis, has to be phosphorylated to be active, right? So we'll keep that up here, right, that tyrosine hydroxylase must be phosphorylated in order for it to be an active enzyme. It looks like ACLIV. To be active. All right. So let's just go through the figure, go through the steps that, that uh, allow this to happen, right? It should be pretty straightforward, hopefully. All right, the first step in this is that an action potential arrives at the axon terminal. Hopefully you know that that causes a depolarization within the terminal enough to open up calcium channels, right? So calcium comes in via voltage-gated channels. Well, you know that one of the most important second messengers was calcium, right? We talked about how calcium is kept very, very low in the cell, and so any change can cause it cause a uh, some other change in the cell. So um, second messengers become active. It's not shown in the diagram, but I would think that uh, calmodulin would bind up the calcium. So we'd form calcium calmodulin complex. The next step is that these second messengers tend to target protein kinases and activate protein kinases. Right, and if there's calcium on the scene, right, which typically binds to calmodulin, I think of cam kinase 2 is the likely culprit here. Okay, and we know that cam kinase 2 is involved in this pathway. So activation of kinases, right, kinases have targets that they phosphorylate, they're enzymes, and so in this case the substrate of this kinase enzyme is tyrosine hydroxylase, right? And it gets phosphorylated. All right, so a phosphate group is transferred to tyrosine uh, uh, hydroxylase such that it ramps up its production of dopamine. So we increase dopamine synthesis. Now the truth is that this could be any catecholamine, right, but we have to make dopamine first. So it could be epinephrine or norepinephrine, but remember that uh, the, 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 the precursor to either of those neurotransmitters is dopamine, and it's the tyrosine hydroxylase that converts dopa to dopamine, okay? So that's why I said dopamine specifically here, but I, I suppose hypothetically if the other enzymes are present, it could be any cate uh, catecholamine. Well, more neurotransmitter made means more neurotransmitter released. And an increase in neurotransmitter release leads to a greater postsynaptic response. All right. That's it. That's all for uh, chapter seven. Um, I probably owe you a video on chapter eight to complete the week, but I don't want you to worry about that now, right? Focus on the exam. Uh, chapters five, six, and seven. Uh, it's a great time to start thinking about questions that you might have. Get those questions to me. If they're, will this be on the exam questions? Yeah, yeah, it's fine, right? Uh, I'll try to uh, remind you of the things that we covered. I don't want to say it's a study guide, but I'll try to give you something uh, and look for the uh, assignment on, on Friday with respect to the information this week. Okay, um, I'll give you a time as well that we'll meet for our uh, review session, a ritual review session. 
Um, have a good rest of your week.